Dear friends, uh, welcome in this webcast in which I will present you the inverse approach for uh, diagnosis of lentigo maligna, which is a new way uh, that allows us to diagnose the tumor early. Of course, um, the criteria of lentigo maligna melanoma are very well known since many, many years by this landmark paper of the group of Willy Stolch, from which we learned many years ago how lentigo maligna evolves uh, dermatoscopically, starting from the uh, gray dots that appear on the outlines of the hair follicle and then the asymmetric pigmentation of the follicles, the rhomboidal structure, obliteration of the follicles, and so on. Afterwards, several other studies followed that enriched the list of lentigo maligna uh, criteria. So practically, we know pretty well today how lentigo maligna looks like from the beginning and how it evolves. Uh, dermatoscopically. However, although uh, we have quite a rich knowledge on, on the topic, the, the differential diagnosis from pigmented actinic keratosis and solar lentigo remains a real challenge precisely because uh, lentigo malignant criteria, the ones I mentioned earlier, usually are not present at an early stage. Uh, let me show you an example. This is uh, a dermatoscopic image with clear-cut lentigo maligna criteria, but this corresponds to this clinical image, which is already very uh, suspicious from a clinical aspect. So dermoscopy does not make a difference here. Dermoscopy would make a difference in a small, tiny lentigo maligna like this one, that clinically is, of course, not suspicious. Uh, so here I would expect from dermoscopy to uncover this melanoma and improve my diagnostic capacity, but unfortunately, at such an early stage, the criteria of lentigo maligna are not predominant, are not convincing, are not clear-cut. They are very, very, very subtle. And this is the problem uh, for lentigo maligna diagnosis. This led to the development of the inverse approach, which suggests that since, lenti since lentigo malignant criteria are not present at an early stage, let's not look for them when we examine a small lesion, but let's focus instead of, on the criteria of non-melanomas, in particular three criteria for actinic keratosis and three for solar lentigo that I will present you now one by one analytically. And then uh, the method, according to the method, if we find one of these six features as a prevalent feature, a predominant feature in the lesion, then it is okay, we know what the, what the diagnosis is. But if we don't find any of these six criteria, then this is enough to consider the lesion as suspicious for lentigo maligna. Let's see these criteria one by one. First, scales, which is a clue for actinic keratosis, of course. Second, white and wide follicular openings in actinic keratosis again. Uh, and if we use polarized light, inside the follicular openings, we often see the so-called rosettes, these four dots in a square. Here's a nice example of an actinic keratosis photographed with non-polarized light on your left. So you see only white and wide follicles. And on your right, polarized light, white and white follicles and rosettes inside them. One more example of white and white follicles of lentigo maligna. And third, erythema. Erythema is again a clue for actinic keratosis. Three clues also for solar lentigo. First, brown lines which might be oriented in a parallel fashion, the so-called fingerprinting, or here, another example of fingerprinting, parallel brown lines, or reticular brown lines, pigment network, like in these two examples here. So lines, brown lines, either reticular or parallel, is the first clue for solar lendigo. The second clue for solar lendigo is the very sharply demarcated border. One example is here, and one more is here. Look at the very sharply demarcation of the lesion. And finally, the last one, criterion for seborrheic keratosis or solar lentigo again is the presence of classic seborrheic keratosis criteria such as milia-like cysts or comedo-like openings. So the method, as I said, 
um, uh, says that if we find one of these six features as a prevalent feature in the lesion, then we are okay. If not, th then the lesion is suspicious. Let's see and conclude with a few examples. First, lesion A. Do we see one of these six features? Yes, we do. Reticular lines, therefore solar lentigo. In lesion B, in contrast, uh, if we ask the question, do I see one of the six features, then there is not a convincing answer. Therefore, lesion B is suspicious for lentigo maligna. One more example, a tiny lesion on the forehead, dermatoscopically, none of the six features present as a predominant finding, therefore suspicious for lentigo maligna. I would like to remind once again that the non-melanoma criterion has to be prevalent, predominant in the lesion, which means that it should be present in a, a large part of the lesion's surface, such as in the lesion on the left, we can see parallel brown lines or fingerprints all over the surface of the lesion. In contrast, in the lesion on the right, we can maybe see a few parallel lines of the lower part, but a few parallel lines are not enough. It's not prevalent, okay? And now, let's see a few final examples, starting with this one, uh, clinically, dermatoscopically. Do I see one of the six features as a prevalent finding? No, therefore, suspicious for, for melanoma. Next example, do I see one of the six features? Yes, prevalent, predominant, white and wide follicles, therefore actinic keratosis. Similarly here, do I see one of the six features? Yes, reticular lines, predominant reticular lines, therefore solar lentigo. Let's see the next example. Uh, do we see here one of the six features of um, uh, uh, non-melanoma features? Yes, we see white follicles and although the lesion was quite ugly from a clinical aspect, dermoscopy guides us correctly to the conclusion that this is a pigmented actinic keratosis. And let's finish with two emphatic examples. The first one, uh, this tiny lesion on the nose but without any of the six uh, uh, non-melanoma features, therefore suspicious for lentigo maligna according to the inverse approach. And in contrast here, a, another very suspicious clinically lesion that dermatoscopically displays clearly one of the six features, reticular lines. And in fact, this was histopathologically confirmed as a solar lentigo. So uh, the lesion on the left is malignant and the lesion on the right is benign. And although it sounds crazy from a clinical aspect, it it does not sound crazy if you follow the inverse approach according to which you don't find any criterion of the six on the left, therefore suspicious, in contrast on the right, reticular lines, therefore not suspicious. Remember last word that the inverse approach does not work for lichen planus like keratosis. So in, in lichen planus like keratosis, if you apply it, it will very often be false positive. So this is a limitation that you need to know and this is the, the published paper in the blue journal where you can find all the details. With this I would like to thank you very much for your attention.